Hello all, I am Subramanya and welcome to this video series where we will talk a lot about path to placement. On that note, today I came across a very interesting job description or a job opening from Mahindra Rice about which I wanted to talk a lot and uh, I'll give you some insights about how can one crack this particular job description. Right? On that note, this is a job description for Lead Engineer CAE from Mahindra Rice. A very basic thing about CAE is it is a type of simulation. Hope you all know about it. Generally, simulations are multiple types. It is CAE, CFD, MBD, etc. etc. Any simulation you do on the component is CAE and any simulation around the component is CFD. This is the basic, right? The type of simulation has three stages. The first stage is pre-processing and next is solving and then it is post-processing. Every stage has its own tool to do the purpose. Firstly, why do we simulate a component? We don't have to produce a component to understand how it functions. We don't have to produce a component to see whether it is performing to the requirement what we have decided. These days, we have the simulation techniques where we simulate the scenario on the computers to understand if the product performs what it is intended to do. If the product performs what it was designed for, right? And that is the very basic thing about simulations. Many people might know this. Some who might not know this, this was just an introduction about simulation. Here, we have a job opening from Mahindra Rice posted recently for a lead engineer role on the CAE domain. What is going to be their key responsibilities and deliverables, right? The very first thing they have asked about is ability to do finite element modeling. What is this finite element modeling of vehicle components and systems? Yeah, that, that is a different story. That is talking towards the core department or the subdivision where you will be working on. But when you say about finite element modeling, what is it? Like I previously mentioned, simulation is three stages. The very first stage is called as meshing. And this meshing is the place where you do a finite element modeling. What is it? Basically, meshing is a situation where you break down the component into multiple minute small 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 pieces. Why do we do that? Only when you do this meshing operation, you will be able to understand where the deformation starts or where the change of the material's behavior starts. To understand this clearly, we will have to mesh the component. Also, you cannot directly use the completed 3D model to do a solving, which might not give us the right results or the intended results what we are looking out for. Right? Those results what we get without a meshed model will be totally irrelevant because we will not be able to identify where the deformation starts. And that is where this pre-processing stage is very very important and this pre-processing stage is a place where you mesh the components right that is what we call as finite element modeling to do this there are multiple tools available say for example hypermesh right it is a very famous tool where, which you use to mesh the component there are multiple types of meshing operations with respect to uh, the material with respect to the type of simulation what you do Right? There are multiple type of uh, meshing operations available. What does next critical responsibility is ability to assign thickness and material properties to component. This is actually a basic information or a basic item what any simulation engineer should do or should perform or should have knowledge on. Right? And you will have to build finite element assemblies for the vehicle structures. Should have good understanding of different types of connections like spot and seam welding. Connections. This is again a very important aspect. Connecting element itself is an individual part when you consider a complete assembly. Say for example, you will have this hood outer part, hood inner panel. When I say hood, it is the bonnet. This hood inner will have a lot of small reinforcements placed on the corners with respect to its own functionality. When that is the case, how do you join this inner panel and the reinforcements? You will have to spot weld them. So this spot weld is a connection methodology. How will you design a spot weld is a different story. What designers will take care, design engineers will take care. What will simulation engineer know is how will you replicate that joining methodology on the simulation model. 
right? Because you are trying to simulate. So how well do you know on developing these connecting models is very, very important for a simulation engineer. And again, you will have to apply loads, boundary conditions to do static analysis, load, uh, carry out model frequency responses. So these are all next stages in which you will progress further. If you remember our engineering syllabus, we used to talk about the simple harmonic motion, complex harmonic motion, where you will have a center beam and you will have a scale and how does it generally get positioned? How do you uh, work or how is the force acting when you stand over a hoverboard? Uh, how can that influence on the movement of the hoverboard? These are all basic fundamentals. This detailing, whatever they have shown, directly means that you will have to be strong in your fundamentals right and ability to recommend design modifications to meet acceptance criteria this ability is very key because as a simulation engineer you are the one who will be informing the design engineers about the failure and recommend a new shape say for example i create a cube with a particular thickness i wanted this cube to withstand say a load of 100 newtons for example right if this cube whatever uh, me as a design engineer have designed doesn't withstand this 100 kilo newton as a simulation engineer you will be the person who is proposing me a design change which will allow this cube to withstand the force of 100 kilo newton because the requirement here for everybody in the company is to make a component which withstands 100 kilo newton right or not so a simulation engineer should have this capability to recommend design modifications it is not needed that the design engineer accepts completely whatever the simulation engineer says but they will get an idea about where it is weak and where should the strength be increased right so when you look at these kind of things you see like i mentioned they themselves have asked about good fundamentals on strength of materials applied mechanics finite element methods etc and etc right so this is the basic requirement what they already have and who they prefer as an ideal candidate here is a person who has six to nine years of experience in this field and well versed with meshing tools like hypermesh and simulation lab solving tools like nastron and abacus ansys post-processing softwares like Hyperview and FemPart. Now, on the pre-processing, when you use Hypermesh, you will be able to mesh the compound. On the solving technology, where you perform the analysis itself, if it is a frontal crash analysis, you perform a frontal crash analysis using maybe Nastron or Abacus or ANSYS. Abacus and ANSYS are very famous these days. Post-processing, whatever you had done as a simulation, you do a post-processing step where you will understand the behavior of the component and then give us a result. For that, you again use software like Hyperview FEM part, right? So it is very important that you at least know one of these tools on all the stages. Knowing Hypermesh at pre-processing situation, knowing ANSYS solving situation, and knowing Hyperview at post-processing situation is a very key thing for a person to get shortlisted as a simulation engineer. Right? And they've also given a preference like if you come from this automotive industry background, you will be given better priority because Mahindra is an automotive company. That is very logical. But again, they had mentioned that this is only the preference and not a mandate. Even if you come from another background, say for example, consumer electronics, you would still be considered because here it is very key to understand what you will be doing on every stage. What are you going to do on hypermesh? What are you going to do with ANSYS? What are you going to do with Hyperview? Right? What do you do on meshing stage, solving stage, post-processing stage? That is what is key. If you are from an automotive background, it is preferable. But it is not a mandate. That is the key message what you will have to take. Right? To qualify as a lead CAE engineer, you should have a master's degree in mechanical or mechanical technology with machine design. So this educational background, they've also added another sentence here, which says like, we'll equip you with necessary theoretical knowledge and practical skills needed to drive this. If you may not be a master's person from machine design, you may not be a master's person from even mechanical engineering, right? But if you are strong on the fundamentals, because they prefer master's people because of their theoretical knowledge, right? If you have this fundamental 
knowledge very strong and if you had worked on key simulations like crash worthiness like bending simulation torsional simulation then definitely your resume is also going to be considered right and how can you apply for this role is what they have talked a lot here what would be an ideal candidate they have also mentioned 6 to 9 years we have talked about what characteristics one should have who would be who are the set of people who are applying for these kind of roles these days a person most commonly from an automotive background who had worked on simulations and when they say you worked on simulations it is not like you just did one of the stages you should have been a person who have done all the three stages right because doing only meshing is not sufficient doing only solving is not sufficient only post processing is not sufficient you will have to know the complete set because as a fresher you will not be exposed to solving or post processing you will be given only with pre processing activities only when you become strong there you will be exposed to do solving and post processing activity the real essence of the simulation lies on the post processing or on the solving situation only right so this is the key message as a simulation engineer it is very important or key to not only know one of the stages but to know all the three stages so a person who had worked on an automotive industry would be the person who is applying for this particular role and he or she will portray their skill set by working on multiple projects or multiple type of simulations the more number of simulation you do the more prefer you become the second situation is bending simulation is one methodology you can do bending for an automotive component you can do bending for a consumer electric component you can do bending for a sports equipment so now if you had performed a bending simulation for example you are an ideal candidate also right so people from tier 1 tier 2 industries will also be a set of candidates who will apply for these roles similarly from the engineering services who had worked on multiple oems projects they will be ideal people who will be applying for these kind of roles right and finally it is the basics if you know very clearly you will be the person who will finally get shortlisted and since it is between 6 to 9 years again the salary band would be between 8 lakhs to 13 14 lakhs depending upon what you are getting before so but i believe the uh, salary would start from 8 lakhs and go up till 14 lakhs right how can you equip yourself to get shortlisted in these set of companies and that is where skilling can help you really well because we have specifically developed a program for the ca purpose and this program will talk about almost all the stages what you do over a week right here you will do pre processor using ansa which is one application one way of application and next is hypermesh hypermesh is yet another tool in which you use to do uh, pre processing similarly like i already mentioned fundamentals is the key to crack a similar job so you will have a super cross refresher which talks a lot about strength of materials finite element analysis etc right and this ls dyna right this ls dyna is a solver tool which you will have to solve right and again crash worthiness using hypermesh and radius hypermesh is pre processing radius is a solving tool crash worthiness is where you will exclusively work on automotive frontal crash rear crash etc etc so this is the type of coursework you will have to study how do you have to study you will have to study by doing a lot of projects across these things and these projects should be industry relevant how can this be industry relevant when you yourself work on a frontal crash analysis right when you yourself perform a central crash analysis that is how you will get exposed to what pre processing is how are you assigning material how are you assigning the boundary conditions if at all there is a difficulty how can you propose a design change which is all a key aspect for a simulation engineer to know more about this coursework uh, the coursework about post graduate program in cae schedule a one on one session with my expert team and my expert team will validate your profile and suggest you with more similar projects for you to work on and get the right knowledge to crack these kind of interviews thanks a lot see you in the next video